good word, Judge. Your boy DKB here. So let's get back to it. I missed a day or two of practices. So we'll recap uh, Wednesday's practice. And I believe we practice Tuesday, if not Monday, if not all three, I don't know. But uh, the general consensus on what's been going on with you guys so you can stay up to date uh, on what's currently going down as well. So at least in terms of some of the more recent news, Dwayne Brown, he's been activated from the PUP list. Finally, we got to see him uh, go through some individual drills, of course, uh, his normal rehab and conditioning stints. But... The good news is, is that we at least have him back in the building. We have him going through the beginning motions of uh, getting ready to start for this offensive line. And with week one, not too far away, this couldn't have come at a better time, especially as we have some offensive line guys shuffling in and out of the line with, uh, you know, somewhat minor to moderate injuries. So we'll talk about some of those as well. But. In terms of quarterback news, so Aaron Rodgers, um, he's been heating up, right? He spoke about this himself, uh, that with especially him getting a, a preseason start against the Giants in general in preparation for week one, practices were going to start really ramping up um, and, and meaning a lot more, meaning every snap as it's been the entire offseason. But anybody that's played sports, you know, uh, things kind of like... If you're doing 100% early on in, in, you know, like a training camp or a practice setting, as you get closer to more meaningful and meaningful moments, you start going beyond that 100% threshold. It's kind of the best way I can put it. So that's kind of the mindset that I'm in with what's going down right now, which means these practices uh, that we're hearing about now are going to kind of be the epitome of everything that's been happening, especially with the new installation of this offense. Still adjusting to players, uh, reeling a little bit from the Corey Davis retirement news. There's going to be a lot of stuff uh, to try to adjust to here. But Aaron Rodgers, he's been showing a lot more escapability than maybe we've seen for the majority um, of this offseason. He's looked really good coming off play action to the right. And keep this in mind, play action is going to be a, a significant staple of what we're going to do in this West Coast offense this year. Not only because we have Aaron Rodgers, but because we have Brees Hall and we have Dalvin Cook as our two highlighted weapons in the backfield, even if um, we're not having a strong run game necessarily from an efficiency standpoint by virtue of either one of these two guys being able to break off a ball the distance and take it to the house. Defenses are going to need to respect that at all times, which means Aaron Rodgers gets his chance to go out there and capitalize um, manipulating defenses as he's done throughout his entire career. And that's what we're starting to see pick up a lot more during this camp. So um, one of the, the best throws, I guess one of the sauciest ones uh, was actually Aaron Rodgers to Alan Lazard. Uh, and not that he mossed Sauce Gardner, but he was able to get a very good back shoulder throw uh, touchdown reception against Sauce Gardner. And it was one of those plays where, you know, perfect coverage. It was just the perfect ball uh, that was thrown by Aaron Rodgers in that situation. Zach Wilson, he's been a little bit more up and down, right? We had a, a pretty, maybe a week, week and a half worth of very solid practices coming out of Zach Wilson where if there were mistakes or drawbacks, it was so minimal that it wasn't even worth mentioning. So this is our first time kind of hearing that things have been up and down again in a little bit. Uh, but the good takeaway is that we're seeing more and more progression out of Zach Wilson as he looks to redefine his career again. And this new progression is the fact that you're seeing things that you haven't even seen from him necessarily to date. He's always either had uh, an open throwing window um, or he's done things extending the play. Um, you know, that master quarterback class level play of being able to uh, um, throw your receivers open and anticipate, uh, you know, receivers coming in and out of their routes and stuff like that. We've seen more of that from Zach Wilson with this particular practice, him connecting with Alec Erickson specifically on such a play. So happy to see that things are still going there. I expect the Zach Wilson news will start fading out pretty quickly here, especially after this Giants game is done because we're going to purely be focused on these regular season games. What's happening with Aaron Rodgers? Who's in? Who's out of these lineups? Who's excelling? Who's the weak links, etc.? And a lot of these backup guys, specifically Zach Wilson, because you're only going to generally have one quarterback for the entirety of the game, uh, will no longer be a focal point. So it'd be interesting to see kind of what we uh, do here as the season progresses with him. 
Um, in injury-related news, uh, as far as Carl Lawson goes, we're still being pretty cautious with him. He had the back injury, so at least he's starting to get back into the, the, the walk of things. He's going through some light work. Mostly conditioning and rehabbing stuff, but uh, you know, I mentioned this before: back injuries aren't really a an issue you want to try to force uh, and come back early from because it's it's just going to decimate you in the end uh, and right there in the moment. So uh, no need to have him back. The defensive line has been feasting. Carl Lawson has the opportunity to come back when he wants to. Will that probably eat into some of his goals and things that he wanted to get done, like his double dash, uh, double digit sack season? Um, of course, but him taking a pay cut for us, uh, I think already signifies where both sides uh, kind of think he's at, right? I think this is one of those seasons where he could definitely outperform his contract, uh, but with the depth that we build, it's no longer a requirement that he has to be that ace in the hole for us. So lovely to kind of see that uh, we're not as dependent on him as we've been uh, in seasons past. Um, other news, Wes Schweitzer, our guy that's been starting at right guard when uh, AVT being out, um, he's nursing some injuries, so we've seen him off to the side. The same Alan Lazard that went out there and caught the impressive touchdown, he actually ended up leaving practice early. Nobody has any idea why. Um, and I haven't seen any reports saying that they've seen him walking off with a limp or anything of the sort. So maybe a personal matter, but uh, it seems like the expectation is by the time you guys see this, which will be tomorrow, which is technically today, um, we should know a little bit more via press conferences. Um Brees Hall showing early signs still has all of the explosiveness that we've looked for uh, that we've seen from him in years uh, years <laughs> in his rookie season uh, as well as matching it with the elusiveness since he's come back we've seen him repeatedly be able to get into that second and third level of the defense don't think he's necessarily taking anything crazy to the house per se but the speed and everything that we've been seeing uh, is definitely prevalent. Something that Aaron Rodgers himself figured he need to speak about a little bit, uh, comparing him to former Packers legend Amon Green and kind of saying, like, it's almost that he's so quick that you don't necessarily see it coming, right? It's kind of like the first time you've seen spinners. Like, things look like they were going normal, and then you realize, that, you know, something was kind of like loopy there. So... Glad to see it. Uh, I, I thought after a while hearing Robert Sala kind of give us the updates about what he's clocking on the GPS. Generally, guys aren't running a 40-yard you know, dash <laughs> at the running back position out on the field. Um, so it was great to hear that he still had the top end speed. But, you know, we definitely want to see it on the field. And we are. Um, Joe Tipman, he's returned back to practice only on an individual drill basis, but that's better than nothing, especially with the timeline that we heard that his knee injury may cost him a couple of weeks, which may still be true, um, but he's getting back into the throw of things early, and uh, I think the competition phase of this stuff is kind of you know done at the moment. He'll make up that ground as the regular season goes on, and let's just say probably by week six, I'd imagine he gets a chance to overtake Conor McGovern. Um, but he also was starting that left guard, I believe, for us during practices uh, with, um, I feel like I keep forgetting his names these days, with Lakin Tomlinson being out as well. So we know that he has the guard capability, which is something he got early practice reps at. So there's going to be a way to fit him in, whether he's backing it up at center or guard. He looks like he could be the main interior guy. Um, outside of what Wes Schweitzer was uh, supposed to be earlier on. So we'll see what the offensive line alignments generally look like. But uh, other guys for the offense, Carter Warren, Israel Bandikanda that also was dealing with the knee uh, or the thigh contusion, and Kenny Yaboa, they're all rehabbing as well. So uh, guys that we probably weren't going to expect to see. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays into cuts. Kenny Yaboa specifically, if he can't go for the Giants game, this is Zach Kuntz's last opportunity to try to make a strong, uh, strong impression uh, and, and find a way to secure himself on this roster. If not, it's probably going to go to Kenny Yaboa. Uh, Carter Warren, we all feel like he's going to be a practice squad guy. Uh, and then with Izzy, same situation. When it comes to the running back rotation, uh, we talked about this on the Jets Flight Squad podcast, ideally keeping four guys. We know Brees Hall, Dalvin Cook, most likely Michael Carter, and then it's probably between... 
or not probably, but it's going to be between Izzy and it's going to be between um, Bam Knight. And with the way Bam Knight performed last week against the Buccaneers, a lot of people are down on him. So we'll see if the coaching staff felt as bad about the performance as what uh, we generally are. Um, Randall Cobb, he's been getting a lot of run with the first teams, especially with this particular practice. Out, not this particular one, but the week leading up to this, he's seen his reps continue to increase. Um, and we saw during the first unofficial depth chart release, our top three guys, no surprise, Garrett Wilson, Alan Zarr, Corey Davis. But Corey Davis was our main slot receiver. So Randall Cobb is going to come in and immediately fill that role. We'll see if maybe McCole Hartman can steal it from him, but Randall Cobb has been looking very good um, from what I saw and all of the reports that I've been seeing. Uh, and we know what his report with Aaron Rodgers looks like. So he's catching balls all over the place. He's not only catching balls, though, it's the fact that he's creating quite a bit of separation while he's doing it. So we're seeing the age not really be a factor here whatsoever. Now, as we go through a very long season, that'll continue to wear down. Um, so we'll see how the New York Jets try to manage his snap counts. Um, but for what it's worth, he's looking really, really good right now as our starting uh, slot. Uh, Will McDonald, he has been battling with Makai Becton ever since Makai Becton's got the nod to start um, at right tackle against the Giants. And he's been getting the better of him, which isn't an unexpected or bad thing. Will McDonald has surprised many of us. Uh, with his aptitude to be able to live in the backfield and uh, not just rack up a ton of pressures, but also convert a decent amount of those into sacks early on with the repertoire moves, but that patented cyclone spin move he has um, definitely being at the top of the list. So Makai Becton, we've seen him struggle against Carl Lawson, who was supposed to be another finesse speed rusher type guy. Uh, and then Bryce Huff, same kind of memo. So um if he's going to iron out these kinks and find a way to stop or slow down some of these speed guys that give him difficulty, especially at a position he hasn't necessarily uh, fully adjusted to um, and is still learning the finer points of, this is going to be his best chance to do so. So I'm loving that particular matchup, actually. Um, Bryce Huff beating him consistently um, was cool, but uh, seeing somebody with a little bit more of a... a normal physical archetype at the position in Will McDonald as opposed to the the smaller Bryce Huff um, I, I think makes a lot of sense but people that can get to the quarterback are people that can get to the quarterback and for the New York Jets at least if you're Bryce Huff or Will McDonald uh, they've been getting the job done and then lastly we have of course Miko Hartman probably the quickest guy on our roster um, arguably um, but nobody denies the speed that's there, and we've seen that be a huge, huge factor. So when it comes to the deep ball, Garrett Wilson has the chemistry with Aaron Rodgers to pull it off, but I would expect, especially with Corey Davis being out now, a fair amount of those big play opportunities come Miko Hartman's way since uh, it's going to be hard to overthrow the man, uh, and once he's uh, able to get past that 10, 15-yard barrier, um, it's pretty much going to be a wrap if you don't have double, triple coverage back there. So looking forward to that. And then uh, as far as our rookie, Zaire Barnes, he's been making noise since the Panthers game, racking up tackles left and right. Once again, significant tackles second in the preseason uh, in that particular stat so far. But I think what's more impressive is we didn't expect this level of um play from him right away right and it's not like he's doing starter level things just yet um but especially considering his conference and everything that he's came from uh and the way that he was utilized as a pass rusher um he's excelled in pass coverage to a decent degree um and, and when he's making mistakes he's still showing that he has the physical capabilities to go up there and try to really minimize those so I'm impressed with him. I think the coaching staff has really fallen in love with him. Again, it's kind of been between him and Chaz Surratt. Uh, as the guys, uh, Robert Sala seems to be taking the most liking to out of his starters. Uh, but he's impressing. I, I, right now, I'm pretty sure he has a lock on the fourth linebacker spot with Surratt uh, having dealt with that injury. Um, and I'm loving it. He's going to be a special teams ace when he comes in. You feel comfortable about him giving you quality snaps. And he's looking at least showing some early signs that he could be that next quality um, linebacker that, that Robert Sala develops into 
uh, you know, an all-star down the line. I wouldn't be surprised if he's challenging for a starting spot um, as soon as next year if he continues to uh, uh, progress the way he's doing now. So those are parting thoughts. Uh, that's everything you guys need to catch up on from the last few practices. Um, let me know what you guys' thoughts are. I'm going to be dropping some lives most likely. Uh, I thought I'll do videos for them, but of course, 53-man roster predictions. Um, and then some other stuff that I'm still trying to spitball. But nonetheless, appreciate you guys watching. The sport's always welcome. I'll catch you guys again. Peace.